Okay, the mesh locate. Um, you know, we can uh, pretty much always use this in conjunction with the mesh quality tool. So what it's going to allow us to do, though, is move one, one or more nodes dynamically without changing the number of elements. So we can move uh, nodes to represent a connection location by moving a finite along a finite vector. Move nodes to improve mesh quality, which is most common. Uh, mesh editing can be selected based on geometry or as a standalone. Typically, it's selected based on a geometry. And um, it's pretty important to note that um, there's an option in here I'm going to point out. Constrained to curve slash surface is enabled. It's on by default, but this prevents you from dragging nodes and elements off of the surface. So let's go and take a look at that. So let's turn on our quality display and let's create some. Uh, mesh that will uh, give us a little better example and let's go to our mesh locate tool and the surface mesh quality so we're going to talk about these two in conjunction with one another a little bit so what I have here is I have mesh I'm going to turn the geometry off so it um, shows our our elements a little bit more if we go to the surface mesh quality we see we're seeing two levels um, based on the FEMAP quality sources of Jacobian, the max value we were looking at is 0.6, and this can be changed as well if you want to see lower values and see where your uh, mesh really stacks up. The default is 0.6, and you'll see down here at the bottom, you'll see two items that are kind of grayed out. You'll see the minimum quality and the maximum. So the minimum is a near perfect element and uh, the maximum is 0.628. So going back to the mesh locate, um, remember I said we can go attached to surface, attached to solid or standalone. We're just gonna uh, concentrate on uh, attached to surface and we're gonna dynamically move nodes around. And I'm gonna make sure this uh, constrained curve or surface is on. So I'm going to select the browse button to grab my surface <coughs> and it allows me to select there. Now when I hit my select icon, it wants me to select a node that I can go in here and start dragging around and perhaps fix up some of this geometry or this element geometry that has uh, some quality issues. So we can drag them around and fix up a few elements. I would uh, not recommend trying to do this for hundreds of elements, but it could be done. Now, uh, we have our mesh fixed up. We have our uh, elements located as we want. Uh, as I showed you before, we cannot drag this off the surface. If we turn the constraint to the surface off, then it allows us to, to do some things we'd probably prefer not to do. Okay, now if we want to apply this to our finite element model, we have to hit save. And again, it will save our mesh. And if we go to our quality display again, we have a, uh, a better mesh. Okay. All right, so we just talked about the mesh locate and the mesh quality. The quality source, well, this is another um, useful thing to note. If we go to our surface mesh quality tool, um, we have all of the quality attributes that you want to look at here. Aspect ratio, taper, internal angles, um, and others, and also from the NASTRAN. Uh, so if you want to look at quad aspect ratio, maximum allowable for NASTRAN, um, you could look at that. FEMAP, uh, you could go to aspect ratio, maximum allowable is 10. We have, all of our elements are good. 
but you can go and change the quality attribute you want to look at. You can change the maximum value you're willing to accept um, for for the uh, for the Jacobian or aspect ratio or any of the other attributes. Okay. All right. So we talked about that default. Uh, you can show it as four levels. I did not show that, but there it is. You can show that as four levels, and that will give you um, the max value is also always in red, and the contours are always below that. 